Welcome to the Unstable Recap. Wealthy CEO biotech scientist Ellis Dragon has been having difficulties after the death of his wife. Constantly unable to focus, he needs to figure out how to turn carbon from the skies into solid concrete. Red Lab scientists Luna and Ruby work diligently to try and solve this issue. Administrative assistant Anna worries that this could lead to the board voting off Ellis. She makes the decision to reach out to Malcolm. Now promoted to project manager, he is sent to retrieve Jackson Dragon, his son, the only person that could help Ellis get out of this rut. They had a minor falling out in the past, Jackson fearing that Ellis wants to mold him into a mini Ellis. He has taken up teaching the flute and wildlife photography as a hobby. Malcolm as project manager has more on his plate to deal with. Forced to clean up spending, he first reduces costs by swapping out expensive pistachios into store-bought plain ones. He also has many run-ins with HR guy, or a guy Malcolm has a crush on. Ellis's destructive situations has led to the board scheduling therapy sessions for him, but now the therapist has disappeared. Jackson moves in with Ellis, and rough at first, he starts to work in the red lab with Ruby and Luna. Invited out to karaoke night with the crew, shortly after, he learns the therapist had been kidnapped by Ellis, living sound in his basement. He views the kidnapping as a newfound friendship. Leslie, the therapist, now lives in their basement. Since moving into the lab, Ruby has found Jackson attractive, asking him out on dates and even making out. But she always dates douchebags. She confides in Luna and worries that their relationship is moving way too fast. So she wants to dump Jackson because he's a good guy. During this, Ellis still struggles to work, distracted with his invisibility cloaks, magical bells, and a hawk. Twins Chaz and TJ are gunning for Ellis to be removed. Anna aims to solve this problem by admitting she will leak their pilgrim cosplaying events, and women at their sex parties won't like them anymore. Until they reach out to their rich IT friends, hacking into Anna's hard drives to find her fan fictions at work, about her being appreciated and everyone thanking her for keeping the office running. Admitting all of this to Ellis, he helps her get revenge by TPing their house. Pulling into their driveway, he hits Chaz, lying to cover up the situation and saying they're there to celebrate TJ's birthday. Pulling them over to a bar where they celebrate the twins. Trying to revive his image, Ellis invites over a news reporter. Everything goes wrong. His interview with the news reporter, the findings in the lab with Luna slipping up, and a photo of Ellis playing with his toys. This photo goes viral as the Wizard of Odd. Every so often, Jean, a close member of the board, meets up with Jackson to practice flute and the harp. Jackson decides to break up with Ruby, and they continue on as friends. Emotions for Jackson emerges from Luna. She breaks up with her boyfriend Brian that works at home, and constantly drains her from social activities. One of the many reasons why Leslie is in their house permanently is because his wife recently divorced him. Jackson wants to kick him out for constantly eating their food and avoiding his marital problems, also that he throws random loud parties at night with peculiar naked people. So they rub smelly ointment on the walls. Noticing this, Leslie decides to move out, and he calls someone to report that he will corroborate their story of being kidnapped to kick Ellis off the board. By now, Ellis and Jackson have fixed their father and son relationship, over bonding time at gardening, until Anna explains that if they don't start to show progress on the concrete, Ellis will be voted out of office. Starting to finally like his father, Jackson and the Red Lab try to solve this issue. Jackson arrives at Jean's place to try and convince her to help delay the board, but there he realizes that she was the one that called for it, giving Leslie a room to stay so he will testify to the board. Rushed for time, they hear about Anna's fan fiction and decide their sole purpose to try and discover it. So she fabricates a fake version, one where Luna is an eagle and Ruby is a cow, but this only caused more conflict rather than work. Tired of this, Malcolm reveals that Anna just wanted to be appreciated at work, so they thank her. She is also probably going to kill Malcolm for this. Jean approaches the board, explaining that Leslie was abducted by Ellis. However, her plan fails. Leslie disproves all her claims, because Jackson offered him a room back at their house. The board still wants to vote for a new CEO, as Ellis hasn't made any new progress. Anna slowly delays them, as the scientists rush in to show their newly formed concrete. In an industry worth trillions of dollars, they are bound to make a fortune, so they are forced to keep Ellis as CEO. He fires Jean for trying to start a coup, and back at the lab, Luna and Jackson realize their love for each other and finally kiss. Supported by their close friend Ruby, in a rage, Ellis burnt down Jean's car. This is where the story ends. Make sure to subscribe, and for more, watch this.